Hey guys, last day. I'm super bummed. I've really enjoyed uh, going through Daniel with you guys. I've really enjoyed watching you guys rehearse under the, the sky bridge thing, the skywalk, and, and hearing you guys at the chapel. I mean, it's been amazing. So I just want to thank you. I want to thank uh, um, Mr. Bergen. I want to thank all your teachers. Thank you guys for inviting me. Okay? So i um, been super blessed by it. We know the drill. We're in Daniel. We're going to skip chapter 5. We're going to be in chapter 6. But what did we learn in chapter 4? Um, I saw your hand first. What? Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you can go get some. All right. And um, does anyone remember what the dream was? I saw you first. There was a tree. Didn't cut it down, but yeah, I give that to you. Go for it. Yeah, and go. What's up, bud? You wanna add to that? Mm -hmm. and then the angel yep yep you can go get some too great you guys did a great job remembering that and then we know Nebuchadnezzar turned into Jubaga and all that stuff and uh, what did what was Daniel's response to Nebuchadnezzar I saw her hand first Right, right, go for it. And um, was he happy that Nebuchadnezzar got this dream? No, he wasn't, go for it. And one last thing, when we think about our job and what it means to share God's truth, what does God call us to do? Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Go. Great. Great. We, we're, we're to be compassionate. We're to um, share God's word, share, share our, our faith with those who would um, be, you know, who are in need of hearing the word of God, the truth of God, and watch God do an amazing miracle. So now we're in chapter six. We, we skip chapter five, and I'm going to read parts of it, like I said, and... Um, We'll get going. So chapter 6, starting in verse 1. This is, of course, Daniel in the lion's den. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be throughout the whole kingdom and over them three high officials of whom Daniel was one, to whom the satraps should, be, should give account so that the king might suffer no, no loss. Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. And then the high officials and the satraps sought to find a ground for compl uh, complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom. But they could not find any ground for complaint or fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. Then these three, then these men, uh, said, we shall not find any ground or complaint against Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. And so does anyone re re know what happens after this? Anyone, anyone? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can go for it. How long was this document for? How long was this law put in place for? Is this a specific amount of time? Uh, I saw your hand first over here. Right, but it was for a specific amount of time. 30 days. 30 days. 
a whole month. You go for it if you want some. All right, 30 days. So we know this, they, they put this into effect. They go to Darius and say this, all this stuff. Then we continue to move on. Verse 14, then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed because he was distressed because these men said, okay, you put this thing together and uh, yo, we called Daniel praying to his God. And he was like, what? And they were like, well, you can't take it back. We know you really like Daniel, but you can't take back the law you signed in. It's the law of the Persians. And he's like, doesn't know what to do. So he's distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. And he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, no, O king, that it is a law of the Persians that no injunction or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. Then the king commanded, um, commanded and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, may your God, whom you serve continually, deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him and slept and sleep fled from him. Then at break of day, the king arose and hasted to the lion's den. As he came <clears throat> near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to, to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions. Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angels to shut the lion's mouth, and they have not harmed me because I have, was found blameless before him and also before you. <clears throat> o king, I have done no harm. Then the king exceedingly was glad and commanded that Daniel be taken out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in God. And the king commanded and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and cast into the den of lions. They are children and their wives and all of them before they got to the bottom of the den were eaten up by lions. And then after that, the king gives Daniel a rule and authority over the provinces and blesses him. And Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Guys, this story of Daniel is probably the most well-known. I mean, you could walk up to anybody on the street and they could probably tell you, yeah, Daniel was thrown into a den of lions. It, I mean, you guys know this story. But y'all, this is not a kid's story. I mean, we just read at the end of that. I mean, children get eaten by lions at the end of this thing. That's craziness. This story as a whole sees a very old man, Daniel, being thrown into the lion's den for doing no wrong but just obeying God. I want to make something abundantly clear. And I've been saying this all week. It's not a story to make us more like Daniel. What we've been talking about is not so that we would have faith like Daniel, so that we would be like Daniel. Daniel had faith because God was working in Daniel. So I want all of us to see Daniel's God and believe in Daniel's God because it's the same God today. If we just simply, if you walk away this week thinking, you know, Daniel, I got to be like Daniel, that's moralism. That will get you nowhere. Trust in the God who gives the, you faith to stand firm and courageous in the faith he's given you. I mean, this story is a story of God's greatness, of God's power, of God's authority, of God's passion, of God's mercy, of God's love. Do you hear what I'm saying? The hero is not Daniel. It is God. It is God in all of his glory. I want all of you this last day to implant that in your minds. 
I want us to see and believe in this God because he is the one true God. So we here are in Daniel chapter six. We skipped over five. That's um, this is way after King Nebuchadnezzar. He's gone. He's dead. Um, and chapter five is his son and his son uh, is really unrepentant. He's warned by Daniel. His son is dead. And then the Persians have taken over. Remember, we talked about how the Persians were going to take over Babylon in chapter two. Well, they've done so. And so now we're at King Darius. Daniel is an old man. He's in his probably mid 80s at this point. No mention of his friends, but they're probably also gone. Daniel is still a really big guy in, in the government. He's serving as a high ranking official. He's kept that rank under the, under the new management, under the Persian management now. All wise men need to come to him. All, all these people need to come to him in order to do anything. So guys, this is really cool. Daniel shows amazing commitment to God while serving a corrupt and pagan government. This is a government that hurts other people. I mean, this government was pagan to the core. They, they, would, they would kill people who did not believe in their God, as we're about to see. Remember, King Nebuchadnezzar is gone. And so we see Daniel serving a new, a new government system, a new city under King Darius. And so just a quick application for us. As we grow older, it is God that gives us the ability, compassion, and strength to serve those who hate us. So far, we've learned that from Daniel, have we not? I mean, they've tried to kill Daniel. They've tried to kill his, his friends. Now he's under a new management. I mean, king, like I said, the king is gone. Mr. Chocolate Bunny guy is gone. He came to know God. And King Darius doesn't really know God. And so these people have always hated Daniel and his God, but he is faithfully committed to serve people that want to destroy him. That is a powerful reality. And it's not because of anything of Daniel. It's because of the power of God in Daniel. So I told you all before that you are the church now. So as we see here, draw your lines. Learn to stand firm and courageous in your faith because of the glory and the majesty and the power of who God is for us. I want you guys to learn what it, what it means that when Paul says, run the race that has been marked for you, that we don't run. I don't you guys who runs track in here. Anyone run track or field? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't run. I, oh, the Bible says only the wicked run who, when no one's chasing them. So I don't do that. My wife runs. I don't know where she is. But um, listen, when, when you guys run, you, you, you are training your body. And you're, you're not running. This race is the Christian life. We're not running to, to get something that is imperishable. I mean... It, we are running to get the prize that is Jesus. He, he, is, he is the long living, lasting king. And so when we run this race, this is what this means. That God would give us the strength and the ability to do so that we run for a prize that is so precious. That our salvation was bought by the precious blood of the Lamb. And so, guys, you are the church now, not the future church. You are the church now. So, so stand firm and courageous in your faith. Let me put it practically for you. I mean, you guys have been practicing nonstop all week, your, your musical instruments like crazy, right? I mean, back to back to back to back. I saw a head shake. He was like, no. But, yeah, yeah. So, rehearsals, practices, all these things are happening. You practice because you want to get better. In the same way, for lack of a better word, you practice your faith to grow in the knowledge and faith of our Lord Jesus. You practice it. You, you put it to test. You, you go and you read. You pray. I mean, resolve to do these things now. 
Read your Bible, live out your faith, pray, share Jesus, so that when those times come to serve Jesus or serve the world, as we're about to see in Daniel, you can say with ease, there is not even a comparison here. I choose Jesus. I choose the God of Daniel without question. Resolve that in your life right now. It will not be easy, but it will be the most fruitful decision you will ever make. So Daniel, he's here serving the government and he did very well because he was in a high position. Daniel's role was to watch over taxation so that the king wouldn't lose any money, power, or territory. He was good. He was, he was a good man. He, he did well. We read in verse 3 that the king planned to set Daniel over the whole kingdom. He was going to be King Darius's right-hand man. This is a big deal. Dan Darius trusted Daniel because he was an honest man who sought righteousness and loved God. This is, Daniel em kind of embodied the reality of Micah chapter 6 verse 8. To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with his God. This is also what we're called to do as Christians. Those who would follow after the wonderful word of God to hide it in their hearts, to serve others, even when it is most difficult, when it doesn't benefit you to love someone else, to love others, even when they curse you, to sit with someone that is an outcast, to show compassion to the needy, to feed the hungry, to clothe the poor, to be men and women of character that shines a light into the darkness and broken world that screams, I don't want anything to do with Jesus. And then you scream back, but Jesus loves you. Even if it means trouble for us, as it did for Daniel right here. And as we read, there are those who hate Daniel. In, in verse 13, we see these satraps go to the king, that exile from Judah. They don't even call him by his name. They go to Darius and question Daniel's loyalty, but they cannot really find any wrong with him. So they convince him to make this decree over the, all of the province that is now used to be Babylon, that's now under Persian control. It's like, let them worship you. If anyone worships another person or another god, guess what? Throw them into the lion's den. This is what happens. And what's crazy is, maybe your counselors and, and your teachers will find this funny, but... The first time in all of history that politicians agreed on one single thing. That's pretty crazy. Let's kill Daniel. Okay, that's what's happening here. They hated Daniel because they, he, Daniel loved God. And he believed in the one true God and they wanted nothing to do with him. Does this sound familiar to you yet? This happens with Jesus. When, when Herod and Pilate come together and they come into agreement and they become friends, that's Luke 23, 12, they, they come and, okay, let's kill Jesus. This is foretold to us in Psalm 2 that the kings of the earth will come together against the Lord. Now, Daniel has a choice here. He can choose popularity and position with the king and the Persians, or he can choose death and obey God. Of course, he chooses death. And he chooses to do so by standing firm and courageous in his faith. I think we're coming ever closer to the actual persecution that's going to happen, that's happening in the rest of the world. It's going to come here. It's going to come to the United States. And I want to equip you guys with something. There will be those who try to convince you that the Christian life is full of prosperity, that it will get you rich, and that everything will go your way. This is wrong. The road to self-fulfillment is found in the death of another and in the resurrection of another. His name's Jesus. He's our God. And so Daniel has lived through chapters 1 to 5 and has already seen plenty that would make any one of us shake into our boots. His faith has strengthened. Daniel does the same thing that he has always done when confronted with an impossible task. He prays. 
He prays. He's done the same thing previously. We see that in verse, um, chapter 6, verse 10. He gave thanks to God, and he doesn't change a thing. You, I'm not allowed to pray to God. I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm going to continue to do it the way I have always done it. And so he stands firm and courageous in his faith. And then he gets caught. And he doesn't let any of his enemies down at all. They know how to find him. They know that he prays in these regimented times. And he prays for these times and he gives thanks to God. And his enemies find him. Friends, prayer does a lot. We can learn this from the scriptures. That it accomplishes much, as the Bible says, that the prayers of the righteous accomplish much. So take it seriously. It is a gift. It is a gift of God that we get to talk to Him daily. If you're familiar with Psalm 46, I think this is a, a really good example. King Hezekiah, quickly, is the king... In, in, in Israel at the time, and that the Syrians have completely surrounded the people of Israel, the Jewish people, and 185,000 Assyrian warriors, people who would kill women, children, like dismember people. It was disturbing. These are the most fearsome warriors in all the land at this time, and they're like, King Hezekiah, lay down your weapons or you're going to die. He was like, if we lay down our weapons, we're going to die anyway. So he goes before the Lord and he says, God, if you don't do something, we're going to die. And you, I mean, you've promised to us that you will protect us. Please. I mean, there's nothing we can do. And what happens? An angel of the Lord comes. I personally think it's a Christ type. Maybe the pre-incarnate Jesus comes down and slaughters 185,000 Assyrian warriors in seconds. In seconds. And then King Hezekiah writes Psalm 46 and says, Be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. This is what he's saying. Be still and know. He's writing in the, in the first person as, as the Lord. Because his heart was troubled, so he goes to the Lord. And the Lord answers him. Guys, this is our God. He's mighty. He's strong. And so these men go back to the king and they, they, tell, they tell the king, listen, Daniel's doing this thing. The king is disturbed and distressed, but he can't go back. And they throw Daniel in the lion's den. The king is so disturbed and he can't sleep at night. And what happens? He runs the next day to the lion's den and he says, Daniel, please, please, if you're still alive, tell me. And Daniel says, we're eating pizza. I made friends with these guys. I mean, it's been a pretty cool night. No, he says, the angel of the Lord came and he shut the mouths of these lions. I live, and O king, live forever. I've done no wrong. I love God, and I'm loyal to you. And he, the king says, get those men, throw them in the den of lions. And before the, them and their families and their houses could even get to the end of the den, the lions have overtaken them and eaten them. Guys, this is an amazing story. Just like, just like we see in Daniel, we see something familiar. When we look forward and see the story of, uh, the story of Daniel, how, how he's in the lion's den, and we look to the New Testament, we see also another deliverance from a tomb, another den, where Jesus rose again. The same way Daniel was delivered and he came out of the tomb alive from certain death, we see also that Jesus has done the same. He wasn't found there. The same way that they closed Daniel up in the lion's den with a giant stone that was immovable, they did the same thing to Jesus, but death could not hold him. This is everything. This is the gospel. This is everything to us. I'm reminded by the hymn written by Daniel Thornton. Vainly they watch his bed, my Savior, 
my Jesus, my Savior, vainly they seal the dead. Jesus, my Lord, death cannot keep his prey. Jesus, my Savior, he tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain. He lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose. Hallelujah, Christ arose. Oh, friends, that is our confidence today. This is what Daniel reminds us of. Stand firm and courageous in your faith because we have a living king. And now we live as holy beings. People who live in holiness and righteousness and seek after the face of God. You guys familiar with Buddy the Elf? Yes. 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 You guys familiar with Buddy the Elf? I love Christmas. And so, you know how Buddy the Elf, he's like, he sees Santa, he's like, Santa! Santa, I know him! And he lives so differently than everybody else. Guys, the same way. Jesus, I know him. He, he's everything to me. He, he paid for my life. I, I owe him everything. And now I can walk in forgiveness and stand firm and courageous and say with a loud voice, I know him and I want you to know him. And I can stand firm and courageous now because of the glory and the power of God in me to share that with you and a dying world who hates Jesus. But it doesn't matter because if our God is for us, who can be against us? Campers, as we look at Daniel's life, don't try to be like Daniel. Instead, believe in God. Believe in the God that Daniel believed in so that when the time comes, God will strengthen you that you may have resolve to stand firm and courageous even in the darkest times, even when fear assails, even when things are so disjointed and out of joint, even when the world seems like it's getting increasingly darker and it wants to kill you, you say with a loud voice, God, deliver me and make yourself known to the nations. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the precious, precious gift of your son. We pray this morning that you would help us and fix our minds and our eyes and our hearts on you. I, I thank you for, for these students. I thank you for their desire and commitment to you. I thank you that um, they just want to grow in their faith to you. We pray that you would help us stand firm and courageous in the midst of trying and difficult times. In your name, amen.